Hey guys, I'm Sarah. Every week I comb through hundreds of DIY videos preparing projects for our weekly maker show, Make or Break. Along the way I find some good ones and some great ones, and right now I'm gonna share them with you. This is Sarah's top five DIY closet organization. There are a lot of closet organization videos and even more solutions. If I had more time, I could probably make a top 20 on this subject alone. But for right now, I'm just gonna stick to five. Number five is eternal harvest decor. Brandy has a playroom closet in her basement that is just dying to be finished. So she made a plan to utilize the space and made her way to Lowe's to get materials. Since she wanted large wraparound shelves in the space, she purchased 15 inch particle boards. When she got home, she measured where the molding would go and installed the cleats using glue and her nailer. Next, it was time to build the shelves. She cut down the particle boards on her miter saw, and if you don't want to flip the boards like she did, you could probably use a circular saw. She installed the shelves and then decided to add some extra supports in the middle. After a few coats of paint, this was ready for toys, games, and anything else you could imagine for a playroom. Simple, but pretty and effective. Number four is fix this, build that. Brad started off his project by ripping everything out of the closet and uninstalling the old white wire shelves. And gives you some tips and tricks on how to do that without damaging the walls. He is way less destructive than I am. Next, he broke down some plywood into smaller pieces to start the drawer carcass. Using pocket holes, he assembled the cabinet and then started on the drawers. Now he has his own plans for making simple drawers and he used those to get all these done. He also notes why he chose the pine plywood that he did. He installed the drawer slides and then the drawers and then painted the entire thing. Next he built the hutch that will rest on top of the cabinet. He also used his Craig jig to make the adjustable shelf holes then assembled the hutch. After adding some fine details, installing the drawer fronts, hardware and paint, he quickly cut the shelves that will go on either side of the cabinet and prepped everything for final installation. Number three is DIY Pete. Pete has an eight foot wide closet with eight foot tall ceilings that he designed a plan in SketchUp to custom build some shelves to perfectly fit in that space. He purchased four full sheets of plywood and used a circular saw to cut down the boards. He ripped down more boards on the table saw but said that you could easily use a circular saw for this if you don't have a table saw. You can build these plans customized to your space with just a couple power tools in about a weekend. Next, he built two box frames that will be on the outside shelving unit of the closet. Then he built the center unit that will hold all of the hanging rods for clothes that you can't have folded. If you want adjustable shelves, you may want to invest in this Craig jig, but if you don't mind having permanent shelves, you can just screw them into place. Once the three main pieces were done, he added trim, stained them, attached the hardware, then installed them into the closet. Number two is home with Stephanie. After exhaustingly looking at her options, she ended up deciding to DIY the entire thing with the minor exception of two little IKEA dressers. She designed all of her built-ins to sit on a two by four platform. The back wall will be for hanging clothes and there will be a his and her side of the closet with shelves, an IKEA dresser, and most importantly, maximized space for storage. She built the two by four base and installed that and the vertical supports all around the closet. Then she assembled her Ikea dressers and added those to the space. Next she added the overhead shelves, the horizontal shelves, hanging rods, hardware, trim to really give it that custom luxury feel. Then she painted all of the shelves this really pretty creamy white and painted the floor a warm beige color. After adding some accessories, mirror, and a rug, this whole thing really came together and that's a huge transformation. And number one is Cory Rometta. Corey had this pretty empty walk-in closet and decided to add custom built-ins on both sides of the space with plenty of room to walk in the middle. Using plywood and various power tools, he started cutting down the pieces he would need for the cabinets, the drawers, and the shelves. He added edge banding to the shelves to make it look a little nicer, then started building the custom drawers with specific spots for belts and ties. Then he stained all the pieces before he assembled everything, making sure it all got a pretty even coat of stain and finish. Then he made this fun little shelf for sunglasses complete with a dark blue suede to keep him from getting scratched. He used dowel rods and glue for assembly for everything. Once he got it all mounted to the wall, he attached the hardware and assembled the drawers. This is really cool, Corey. Thank you for sharing it. It turned out awesome. 
All right, that's it. I hope you guys liked my list. But of course, if you found a project that you think should have made it on the list, go ahead and leave it in the comments below and I'll go check it out. Do me a favor and like this video. And if you have not already subscribed to Belts and Boxes, go do that now so that you don't miss any of our shows that come out during the week. You can catch me every Friday at 5 p.m. for our next episode of Week in Review with Rob and every Saturday at 6 p.m. for our next episode of Make or Break. We'll see you then.